So I have a tendency when something goes wrong on my main Linux machine to immediately assume that I can't fix it and distro hop. Like my solution to any solution that I don't know how to fix is to immediately jump to a different distro or reinstall my distro, nuke and pave, and start fresh. It's a lazy man solution to every Linux problem. I, I will put this right out there. It's the best solution if you're a lazy person, to, if you don't want to fix anything, if something goes wrong, distro hop or reinstall, the problem will probably go away. That's usually what I've been doing for the last six years. If I can't figure something out, I hop. Now, there are two reasons for this. One, I already mentioned laziness, but also there's this. This right here is journal CTL. Now, I have been spelunking through this all day long. And as you can see, there are some errors here. And there are uh, some core dumps. If I go up far further enough, you'll see where XORG crashed and you'll see where uh, I've had some Python issues. I'm not going to, uh, I've had some network manager issues as well. These aren't those, but yeah, I've had some issues and I've been going through this all day long because I wanted to stop my bad habit of immediately jumping away from my distro and jumping to something else when something goes wrong. I wanted to see if I could go through the logs and fix the problem. And I've spent basically a good solid five or six hours today doing this. Now, this is one of those core dumps. <laughs> uh, this is a Python core dump. Not sure what's going on there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm assuming that this has something to do with the problem. And I've done some searching and stuff like that, but it doesn't, none of these things, and this is the point of me making this video, is none of these things here make any, uh, none of this makes sense to me, right? And to any normal user, this doesn't make any sense. So over the course of this channel, I've praised the logging mechanism of Linux. So if you use systemd, at least, I'm not sure about the other init systems, but if you use systemd, it literally logs everything. Every single thing it does on your computer, every process that runs, it logs every action. And all of that stuff is here or in some other log somewhere else. And uh, if you are ambitious enough when something goes wrong, you can at least go search out the logs and attempt to discover what's causing the problem that you're facing. So the theoretical awesomeness of logs cannot be denied. But if you're not a technical user, which I'm like halfway towards a technical user, I know some things just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> but then I come across this, right? And even if you ignore the core dump and you go up here to some of the pipeware pulse issues that are really weird. I'm have no clue what's going on there. Uh, and then you have the network error errors that I've been seeing. Uh, those are further up. You know, so I've been, they're all, the, the syntax here, first of all, is not great. But also, if you don't know what's going on or how to read this, you're kind of like, it, it doesn't actually provide you any value. And that's kind of what I've discovered. So I, I have that MO of just hopping away from distributions when things go wrong. So my problem here is this. So whenever I walk away from the computer, and it doesn't happen all the time, usually once or twice a day, I will come back away from my break or whatever, and I'll find that Xorg has crashed. And at first I thought it was a program that was killing Xorg or killing Qtile. So I searched here through system TT, or journal CTL and uh, saw some of the errors that you're seeing here on screen and, uh, you know, didn't understand a word of it, really. So I went to search through the Qtile logs. Now, I have some Qtile errors here from earlier in the day that all have to do, as far as I can tell, with the bar. Uh, this is the CPU module on the bar that is causing all these errors, as far as I can tell. Uh, it might be the memory because they both use PSU Util. But the point is, is that I'm pretty sure that it's not Qtile, I, but I've been searching through these logs and I'm trying to figure it out why XOR crashed. And I looked through the X sessions errors, you know, log, which is in the home directory. There is literally nothing in there, which is surprising because there's always something in there. You know, so I've been trying to fix it. I've been trying to change my habit of moving away from a distro when something goes wrong because I wanted to try to fix it. But the logs are gibberish to me. I don't know what they mean. And even though I can take, you know, snippets of them and search through Google or search through Brave or whatever and see if I can find the answer, I'm not sure if the thing that I'm searching for is actually the problem because I have no clue how to parse 
what's going on there. So my the point of my making this video today is twofold. First of all, I'm moving back to Fedora. <laughs> so I, I, as my main distribution, I'm going to be happier on a more stable system than I am on Arch. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll fix my problem because if it's a QTile problem, I may end up having the same problem on Fedora. I don't know if that's what, what, what will end up happening. Maybe I'll end up having to abandon QTile. That'd make me very sad, but we'll see. Uh, I, I, it's not, see, this is not such a, a problem that's going, that it has caused me so much issues that it makes me want to hop. That's why I tried to fix it because it only happens, like, like I said, once or twice a day and it's fine. I can deal with that because it doesn't happen all the time, but it's annoying enough that I wanted to fix it. But the point is, is that it always seems to happen when I'm doing something. So the other day I was using Whisper AI to create the transcript for the podcast. It was literally five minutes away from finishing. Like it, you probably never used Whisper, Whisper AI before, but it takes a long time, especially when you're it trying is trying to transcribe audio into a transcript of something that's two hours long. Usually it takes about six to seven hours to do that even on a powerful machine. Mine was five minutes away from doing it, finishing that transcription. And when, you know, I got up to go, you know, do something and the computer was, the XORG had crashed when I came back and there was no transcript. So at that point I thought it was Whisper that caused the problem, right? The, uh, the, today, no, the other day, the, the, the next time I was rendering a video, I was rendering a video in Caden Live. And when I came back, you know, to check to see how, you know, the progress was doing, it had crashed, so I had to render again. So it's always happening when something, you know, is happening. So I've spent some time trying to fix it, and I'm giving up. Like I'm reverting back to the norm of me just hopping away, and uh, you know, it, it just seems to be the best solution because I don't know how to fix it. And finding the issue, sometimes you just can't find the issue, even though the the information is probably there. Right, it has something to do with those core dumps. It has something to do with the network manager stuff that's going on. It may have something to do with the PSU util thing that's going on, or the PS util thing that's going on in Qtile. I don't know. Like, I have no clue how to parse those errors to get to the answer that I need in order to fix it. Right, I need to know what's actually going on. And like I said, the 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 information is there, but it's not in English that I know how to read. So. I'm moving back to Fedora. The, the second and more important thing that I wanted to, you know, the second most important thing that I wanted to talk about in this video in terms of the point is that sometimes despite your effort, sometimes despite the effort of trying to fix the problem on Linux or, you know, on Windows or Mac or whatever, sometimes you just can't. Sometimes nuking and paving, sometimes distro hopping or reinstalling your distro or whatever is the best solution. And Usually that's not even when they're, usually it's not when your distro is completely broken. Like say, you, okay, so usually I'm trying to figure out the best way to see, say this and uh, I'm having some issues. <laughs> As you can tell, speaking is not my forte. <laughs> usually when you have a system that's completely broken, the obvious answer is to reinstall, but that's, not the only time when that's the obvious answer. The usual, for me, the obvious answer seems to be when you've spent enough time on trying to fix the problem that it no longer provides you value to continue to try to fix it. And it makes more sense to spend your time just resetting up your system uh, and getting your work done than trying to continue to fight with the logs, try to fight with every single problem that's going on to fix the, fix the issue. So I'm at that point. I no longer want to spend time on this issue. I'm done with it. I've tried to find the issue for many hours now, and I've come up with some vague idea of what's going on, but I could very well be wrong. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm at the point where I'm done. Now, here's the thing. I am a person who owns multiple computers. I spend a lot of my time on the one that's in front of me. It has multiple hard drives on it. It has Debian on the other drive. So I spend some of, some time in Debian every single day because I'm doing a long-term review of it. Uh, and the computer behind me is my standing desk where I try to spend some time, you know, every hour or so. And that's running ArchCraft right now. It has been for a very long time, actually. That's a very strong or very stable distro, or at least it has been, mostly probably because I don't use it as often as I should. You know, it's only a few hours a day. So 
I have the luxury when something goes wrong to not even disk hop. I can just pull out of this particular hard drive and go to a different one and use Debian for a little while and get some work done. That's what I've done several times today because uh, I can't trust this one not to just randomly shut down or randomly pop me out back to the, the display manager. Uh, and I have to kind of be able to trust it. And, you know, I wanted to fix it. I really desperately wanted to fix this. And I'm sure if I spent, you know, another day on this and did some more searching and, you know, consulted some people in my Discord server or did some tooting or whatever to the people who are way smarter than me and uh, asked for help, I probably could fix it. But I've spent enough time on it now. It's time to go to a more stable system. So sayonara, Arch Linux. It's been nice knowing you. And the question is, am I going to miss the AUR? I asked this question the last time I went to Fedora and was very happy for a very long time in Fedora. Didn't miss the AUR at all. In fact, I went so far as to make a video saying that the AUR was overrated. So uh, I guess I'm going to go to Fedora and see if that's true. Now, the question is, do I go immutable or do I not go immutable? That's the question. So, and I'm not going to answer it. Well, you, you guys will have to find out later. <laughs> that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on the mess that is logs and the mess that is sometimes just you know fixing linux you can leave those in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast if you're still watching this and you haven't already dropped a like on the like button i'd really appreciate it it really does help the channel thanks everybody for watching uh thanks everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube i totally messed that up Anyways, thanks for everybody who's, who, who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just went, it would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Also, I'm only going to do minimal edits on this video because I'm running out of time to get one up today. So, yeah, uh, if the editing wasn't up to my normal, you know, editing such as it is, such as it is I apologize for that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.